If any of you Doctor Who fans have the misfortune of owning a Facebook account, you might have noticed that almost every post from the Doctor Who page, regardless of how relevant it is, will usually be accompanied by comments from angry men and women declaring that they're no longer going to watch Doctor Who, that they're sick of agenda pushing, that they believe Chris Chibnall is on a mission to run the ratings and, by extension, the show into the ground. Or maybe a combination of all three. It might seem at times that such people are in the majority, but thankfully, this simply isn't the case. The guilty party here is actually Facebook's algorithm. Comments that receive more reactions than replies tend to be pushed to the top, and Doctor Who fans, and humans in general, love a good argument. Hence why you might be under the impression that the fanbase is universally unhappy with Jodie Whittaker's casting and the prospect of Series 11. Controversy sparks outrage, and outrage sparks attention. It would be wrong of me to suggest that these people don't exist though, so I'd like to spend this video addressing them, and how they might have been misinformed. If you are one of these folks, I really hope you'll tag along for the ride and watch to the end. My name's Billy, and this is why Doctor Who is probably not attempting to lead civilization into the jaws of male genocide. Let's talk about feminism. Feminism is the advocacy of women's rights on the ground of the equality of the sexes. With any ideology though, it can be split into several movements, waves, and subcategories. Some are good, some are not, but in the broadest possible sense, it simply means equality. Many are put off and confused by the fact that feminism uses the word feminine, implying that one gender is better than the other, but that's not the case. It all comes down to context. Historically, it was only fairly recently that women were able to get the vote, and various movements since have allowed for steps towards fair pay, receiving education, equal rights within marriage, the list goes on. And it's still not over. True equality has not really been achieved at this point. I'm currently writing this video in Northern Ireland, where it's still not possible to get an abortion without getting sent to prison. Some misogynistic behaviour is so normalised that it's become difficult for people to identify, in the same way that it was acceptable to say and do things a few decades ago that most of us wouldn't dream of now. On a side note, to those that declare, I'm not a feminist, I'm an egalitarian, egalitarianism encompasses equality of races and genders alike, so technically you're just saying you're a feminist alongside other nice things. Well done you. Of course, at this point, we're just slipping into semantics, so I'll stop there. Obviously, I can't cover the breadth of feminism in a single video on a Doctor Who channel, so I do encourage you to research beyond this whilst being careful about where your sources come from. This misunderstanding that feminism means the subjugation of men can be boiled down to the focus on specific subcategories within it. You know, a significant number of people that technically fall into the minority, with controversial opinions which spark outrage, which spark attention. Sound familiar? So when Jodie Whittaker stated in an interview that she identifies herself as a feminist, that doesn't mean she hates men. In fact, Jodie went out of her way to quell these fears, saying, I want to tell the fans not to be scared by my gender. Doctor Who represents everything that's exciting about change. The fans have lived through so many changes, and this is only a new, different one, not a fearful one. But does Doctor Who have a feminist agenda? I'm about to blow your mind here by proving you right. Yes, Doctor Who has a feminist agenda. It has an egalitarian agenda, but not in the way that you think. It's a show that sees the importance in the equality of all life, and it's been that way, for the most part, since its beginnings in 1963. The Daleks have always been intolerant cyborgs hell-bent on the destruction of all other lifeforms, deeming themselves superior. And despite a few inconsistencies early on, the Doctor has risen to face them. By the time we get to the Daleks' invasion of Earth, the Doctor has defined himself as their enemy. And of course, the antithesis of Daleks are the values of equality, ergo feminism, ergo agenda. Now, when Jodie was first announced, Chris Chibnall said, I always knew I wanted the 13th Doctor to be a woman. Some fans were concerned that only female actors were auditioned, rather than a combination of males and females. After all, isn't that what equality is all about? But Chibnall is well within his rights to audition only female actors. If he pictured the 13th Doctor as female, a possibility that was established from the Doctor's wife and never contradicted prior, it would be rather strange to cast male actors. As far as Chibnall was concerned, this incarnation was a female character, in the same way that, say, Hermione Granger is a female character. There's a big difference between I want to cast a woman and I want to cast a woman and have her talk about how superior she is for being a woman. 
But if that's something that concerns you, it might be worth watching what is currently the only scene of Jodie Whittaker's Doctor available to us, the regeneration. She regenerates, she sees herself, she says brilliant, she falls out of the TARDIS. Nothing about being a woman, nothing about not being a man. So it's looking good so far. On an additional note, Chris Chibnall was actually accused of sexism against women, because the Doctor causing the TARDIS to crash was seen as a female driver joke. But, as I'm sure you all know, this has been a recurring feature for the last three Doctors. I wish this point could arise in every single one of my videos, so it is with undisguised enthusiasm that I say, let's have a look at Series 1. The 2005 series, starring Christopher Eccleston and Billy Piper, provided one of the show's strongest outings to date, partly down to the fact that there was a high degree of uncertainty as to whether they'd be able to create anything beyond those 13 45-minute episodes. It was lightning in a bottle, consistently fantastic, haha, -ha, and there's been nothing like it since. It also starred John Barrowman, who played the show's first openly pansexual character, a transgender villain in the form of Cassandra, and a multitude of gay, female, and ethnic role models, something that the show would continue to build upon in the following years. On paper, one might say that this looks like box ticking, but it isn't. Cassandra's motives are completely unrelated to her being transgender. In fact, it's addressed in a throwaway line that's treated with little in the way of a fanfare. And Captain Jack's pansexuality, whilst an integral part of his character and identity, in no way overshadows the stories being told. Storytelling is prioritised above all else. There is no agenda beyond allowing representation to provide real, relatable characters from all walks of life. It seems strange that it's only recently, rather than 13 years ago, that Doctor Who has been accused of pandering to social justice, when really, since its revival, it's always been a show with progressive tendencies. But I put that down to the current political climate, where strong divides between left and right have led to unwarranted accusations that wouldn't have been considered just a decade prior. If you want to see an example of where agenda pushing and box ticking is prioritised over storytelling, which is possible, look no further than God's Not Dead a pro-Christian film where all atheists are portrayed as evil and irrational, any members of religions outside of Christianity are violent and ignorant, and the entire movie ends with a caption pleading their audiences to text God's Not Dead to everyone in their contacts list. Now, if a Doctor Who episode with Jodie Whittaker consisted of nothing but conversations about gender, male inferiority, and an absence of plot, ending with a caption declaring, March in the name of radical feminism, tweet hashtag radical feminist who to all your followers, that's when you probably have the right to be a little worried. That said, you can find examples of heavy handedness in the last few years. In the Series 9 finale, Hell Bent, the Doctor, our hero, shoots a man to death. The General then regenerates into a black woman. This is all fine, by the way, the gender race change, not the shooting of a man. But she then proceeds to make problematic comments about being a man. While intended to be funny, Stephen Moffat has a history of writing sitcoms playing with gender stereotypes, it comes across as crass, smug, and probably isn't helping. Sorry, Stephen. I suppose the main thing to take away from all of this is that Series 11 isn't out yet. It might be great. It might be terrible, but we can't really judge it at this point. You've probably heard this before, so I'm sorry for repeating myself. I would understand the insistence that the show's on a suicide mission if we'd already had a series of Jodie which hadn't been to anyone's taste, but there's nothing to go on beyond the snippets we've been given, and those snippets in no way imply an anti-male agenda, a prioritising of political point scoring over characters and plot, or an evil BBC scheme to destroy Doctor Who forever. It's so, so important to always consider ulterior motives, so perhaps this exercise in cynicism is warranted. But this applies to everyone, including those that declare with perhaps a little too much confidence that Doctor Who is intentionally digging itself towards its own grave. What are the people telling you these things worried about the show becoming, and how many of their sources, if any, rely upon projection, paranoia, or heavy reinterpretation? Of course, you may argue that there's no way of knowing whether I am being sincere in my arguments. Perhaps I too have an ulterior motive. Perhaps I'm being positive about the show in order to receive free sonic screwdriver pizza cutters in the post. Well, you'd have to take into account that I've not been one to shy away from critiquing the show for the last few years. You'd also have to take into consideration that I'm not receiving free sonic screwdriver pizza cutters in the post, although I have no way of validating this. You'll just have to take my word for it that my kitchen cupboards and drawers are not filled to the brim with Doctor Who sonic screwdriver pizza cutters. 
I can say this with absolute certainty though, because it's a statement of uncertainty, something nobody can tell you otherwise until the airing of episode one this autumn. Doctor Who might still be the show for you.